Okay, welcome back. And here's another synoptic short focusing on the micro and macro impact consequences of the UK leaving the European Union Customs Union. Topical, of course, Brexit has significant micro and macro economic consequences, both in the short term and obviously particularly in the long term. A quick reminder of what a customs union is. You need to define that term very precisely. It's where a group of countries agree to abolish import tariffs, import quotas between member nations and to encourage free trade and free movement of goods and services. But crucially, they also adopt a common external tariff, CET, on any imported products from non-members. In the case of the European Union, for example, the tariff on LCD screens from South Korea will be the same in the UK as in any other European Union country, whilst the UK is part of the customs union. We are focusing here on synoptic economics, picking out some micro and some macro consequences. That's the key to doing well in synoptic economics. There's so much we could talk about, but I'm just going to take you through three micro effects and three macro effects. It's just as part of a, an example of how you can write an essay. So microeconomics focuses, of course, on consumers, on individual sectors, parts of the economy. So one impact could be uh, the consequences for the costs and the revenues of sectors that trade heavily with the European Union. The EU Brexit negotiator Mar Michael Michel Barnier has already warned of what he, what he called unavoidable barriers to trade in goods and services if we leave the customs union. So perhaps the costs of trade would go up in the UK. Certain industries you might want to focus on will be things like farming, uh, pharmaceuticals, maybe chemicals, maybe the car sector. Who knows, maybe even universities, the aviation sector, what have you. So there will be significant consequences for particular industries. Um, what about the consequences for consumers if there are tariffs applied to goods and services from the EU? Think about the impact on consumer welfare, consumer surplus, real disposable incomes, etc. will be a micro consequence. Take a particular sector, the farming industry, for example, if we no longer have that tariff wall around us of uh, EU imposing import tariffs on foodstuffs coming in. What might be the consequences for the farming industry in the UK of two things? One, an end to EU tariffs, and potentially, secondly, of course, perhaps a reform to the system of farm subsidy support. So any kind of sectoral analysis, any discussion about the impact on consumers or individual businesses would be microeconomics, and that would be a great approach to take on the synoptic side. On the macroeconomic picture, all kinds of things you could talk about. Um, impact of trade patterns, for example, if the e, if the uh, UK negotiates trade deals, free trade deals with perhaps the European Union, but it probably more likely uh, expanded out to China and Japan and other countries and Mexico and South Korea. So what will be the impact on patterns of trade between the UK and the EU? What are the consequences of leaving the customs union for our long-term economic growth. Of course, we'd be leaving the single market as well as the customs union. So we would be better or worse off in the long run. You can argue both, both cases, but just raising the point, making the argument that the customs union could affect living standards, per capita incomes, could affect growth rates, is a significant point to make. What are the consequences for the UK fiscal position? That's a macro point, isn't it? So if we leave the EU, what are the consequences for our budget deficit and the national debt? So crucially, of course, if we leave a customs union, uh, we no longer are part of the common external tariff. We might have to face import tariffs from the EU unless we can come up with a free trade deal. So without that deal, following Brexit, for example, dairy products in the UK would experience the highest average import tariff of over 40%. What would be the consequences for farmers in the UK if that was the case? Uh, sugar and confectionery would be significantly more expensive, an average import tariff of 25%. Uh, the market for beverages and tobacco, 20% tariff. So you could think of some micro consequences there, I hope. On the government side, this chart shows the annual net UK contribution to the budget of the European Union. So it's equivalent to between eight or nine billion pounds per year. So on net figure, we pay in about nine billion pounds more than we get back. So there will be a consequence for the fiscal position of the government. To put that in context, UK runs a budget deficit of about 35, 40 billion pounds a year. 
So that would that would that make a significant dent in the figure? Probably yes. Although of course there's also the one-off divorce bill to pay somewhere between 30 and 40 billion pounds for leaving the EU. So context is important, but crucial. This can go back a couple of slides. Micro is the impact on consumers, individual businesses and industries. Macro is the big picture stuff, inflation, trade, fiscal balances, growth, inflation, all that kind of stuff. Loads of opportunities for diagrams to support your analysis. We've mentioned import tariffs. We could talk about subsidy diagrams in the farm sector. Consequences of increased trade frictions, trade costs for businesses could affect their costs. Uh, leaving the EU could affect their revenues, for example. And always scope, I think, always scope for using ADAS analysis to help support the macro points in your answer.